Okay, we're going to paint this. As you can see, I've gone ahead and sprayed this with some of that self-etching primer. The reason I did that was uh, because I had some metal parts on here. And uh, being as that metal is extremely hard, acrylic don't really stick to it that well. So we just prime it and just prime the whole thing. All right? So the first thing you're going to need is something to hold it. Now this thing here is just an old X-Acto knife handle and I epoxy the sheet metal screw into the end of it and it works perfect for holding something like this as you're painting it, okay? So uh, here's my handle. I went and dipped it in uh, gun blowing which turned it black. So the only thing I have to do now is paint the wooden part of it up here and I'll paint that just the uh, brown. The colors we're going to use are white, black, and midnight blue, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and paint, paint it blue, and we're going to, being as it's primed, we're going to paint the paint on there pretty straight and strong. Paint this paint. You just paint it in there. You can paint this paint or paint this paint. Paint this uh, coffee pot uh, a gray like it is right now. That's where a lot of the what do they call it? Uh, granite ware. It's a color of granite ware. I've seen red ones, but that's kind of bright. We want something that looks natural. And to me, most of the coffee pots I've seen have either been gray or else they're a real deep, dark blue, which is what we're painting here. Make sure you get in underneath your handles. Today's the 4th of July. Don't you know, shoot off your fireworks, just take them outside. You don't need any matches. It's hot enough out there. They'll just explode on their own. Okay, so we got that painted. Now what we'll do is we'll just let that dry. And then come back for the next step. Okay. I'm going to paint this a different color. We got a good base coat of that darker blue on there. I'm going to use just some, uh, what was it here? So we just had it out here just a second ago. Wasn't that? There it is. Navy blue. Folk art navy blue. This will just brighten it up a little. Let's keep painting there. Put this paint on there real strong and straight. We'll also give this. Uh, Coffee pot a little sheen, which is okay. There, see, see the difference in color? Just makes it just a little bit brighter.
Alright, now we'll let that dry again. Now for the next step we're gonna we're gonna have to have a toothbrush. I borrowed Judy's so I didn't want to use my own. So anyway, we'll go ahead and do that. Now you don't want to put any water on it. You want to be able just to run your thumb over that so it splatters back on there. Now when you're doing this splattering, don't get carried away. Let me show you something. As you can see on this uh, pot lid here, uh, the little splatters are really very small, especially when we reduce this down to the size of that there. So uh, just, just remember that. In this case, less is better than too much. So I'm just going to get a little on my toothbrush here, get rid of most of it down here, and then very lightly, just see there, real gently. Just like that. That's perfect. A little more on there. like a starry night, doesn't it? You see I got more up front here than I do back here and back, so I want to even that out. paint is all dry now. Let's just set this down for a second and look at our coffee pot. Now if you'll notice, it's just completely black down here because of the smoke. Actually the lower part seems black, black all over here. If this shows up a little better, you can see the splatter up here. But down here on the bottom, we can't see hardly any splatter at all. What, what this splattering is down here is just stuff that's built up on this pot over time. So what we want to do is we want to paint this solid black here on the bottom and then gradually bleed it out as we come up to give it the effect of smoke. Here on the front it's almost completely gone. And we could actually even, you know, if we wanted to, add in some of this, uh, what it is, it's uh, calcium from hard water, you know, out there on the prairie, you don't get this uh, chlorinated water that you do in the city. So this is calcium dripping down on the outside of that pot, which actually looks pretty good, you know, it's a neat little effect. So let's set this back out on the way. you notice I didn't paint the bottom of my pot blue. Well, there was really no sense into it because I was going to paint it black anyway. So I'll just do it. And maybe use a little water here just to make the paint go on a little easier. Okay, now to do this, what we want to do is we want to pick a, pick a spot about halfway up on our pot and then we're going to paint it black, okay? About right there. All the way around. Just going to even it, even it out all the way around the pot. Basically, we're doing exactly what the smoke does. It's 
covering up our blue and our splatters and everything else. And we want to get it even. up into the blue, we're just going to brush along that edge, bleed it out over the blue. something that you'd probably skip if you didn't know better. The bottom of the spigot. Being as that sticks out, that's going to catch smoke more than the area around it. So we're going to paint a little black on that. And then bleed it out up the top. You probably wouldn't even have noticed that had I not told you, but you can look at it and see just how much better that looks being as we did that. Same goes for the bottom of the bales, you can paint those back. Just like that. to simulate that calcium ripping down from the side. Let's take a peek at the color there. It looks kind of just kind of a washed out gray, doesn't it? Maybe just a little bit of brown in it. Well, we're going to paint our handle brown, so let's squeeze out some brown here. I'm using a liner brush. See how long the bristles are there? That way you, you can draw it down. And, you know, you have a lot more control over it. So let's just get some color. It's neat, doesn't it? Huh? It's little details like this that really, really make your carving sparkle. and he's going to say, wow, man, I remember when I was out on the prairie, that water was hard. Let's 
stock right there. Now we'll just quickly dry all this. Seal, seal with the paint. What's this poke? And I didn't do it on the bottom. Notice that? I want that bottom flat. Totally flat. Well, that didn't give me the effect that I wanted, so what I'm going to do is go get me some depth and do it over again. Alright, I got my depth here. This is satin. I don't want gloss. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get start at the top there and I don't want, like I said before, I don't want it to come down here on the bottom. I want that to remain flat. I painted the inside of my uh, spigot black to cover up that splatter, okay? That way it looks like it goes down in there. So I've got my, uh, painted my handle brown, like I mentioned. So now it's just a matter of putting it together. So let me spread those wires back apart. Normally you wouldn't do this unless you, uh, have it sitting by the fire and not being held by the cook. So I'll go ahead and do it. We got a little spring in the handle there. there we go. That's a pretty neat looking coffee pot that any chuck wagon cook would, would mind having in his uh, cooking equipment. And it wasn't very hard to do, but it really makes a nice detail when you're doing uh, the type of carving that I do. And we got it, got it right. Looks just like that real one sitting right over here. So, I hope you had fun following me along on this, and I hope you uh, made your own coffee pot. And until we come up with the next project, I'll talk to you later.